This is joint work. There are only two of us talking. Nicola is sitting down there, prepared to answer questions afterwards. <laughs> but uh, we've divided the, the, the labor between us. I'll talk first, and then I'll give the floor to Henrik afterwards. Now, this study was uh, motivated by con considerations, practical and, and theoretical, to do with uh, lemma selection. Or to be more precise, with lemma selection in maintaining an, an existing dictionary. That is, how do we best make uh, priorities and choose what is going to be the next lemma in uh, our dictionary? And the dictionary in question is uh, the Danish dictionary, which Annette was kind enough to give some examples of, so I won't go into detail with the, the, the dictionary itself. But it is a corpus-based dictionary, and I think behind all corpus-based dictionaries lies an assumption that corpus frequency is some, in some way evidence in support of a word's inclusion in the dictionary. But to be honest, this is something that we know very little about. Uh, for the simple reason that we haven't had sufficient uh, empirical data uh, to be able to say very much about the, the relationship. Um, luckily, this situation is changing, as dictionaries have been online for quite some time now. And in our case, the Danish dictionary went online uh, in 2009, so it's been online for more than three years, and we have locked all queries in that period of time. So let's get on with it. Um, if you approach the question of lemma selection from the outside, there are at least three ways of proceeding. You could continue with corpus frequency as the guiding uh, criterion. And that would be perfectly justified if uh, your concerns are mainly with language documentation. However, if you're more interested in mm, helping users solve their language problems, you should also look at the way that they're actually looking up and use this as a guiding principle. And a, th a third solution would be to combine the two and let the editors make a qualified selection using their common sense. In this talk, we're going to explore some of the tendencies that we've found by comparing words in the corpus underlying the dictionary with the words that users have been searching for. We were particularly, particularly interested in finding answers to questions like this. Despite their presence in the corpus, are there words in our dictionary that users never look up? And almost the opposite question, do they often look up words that are um, not in the dictionary? So put in more general terms, we would like to know the frequency distribution in the corpus of words that people look up most frequently. Are they frequent words? Are they rare words? Or somewhere in between? The goal of the anal analysis, seen from our point of view, is to assess whether our lemma selection um, is in keeping what, with what people are, using, uh, are looking for. To see, is there an equilibrium between supply and demand. If many entries are never visited after all, after say three years, you could say that our efforts have been in vain. And if users search for things that aren't in the database, maybe we should have concentrated our energies there instead. So for us, the question is if there's evidence to suggest that our lemma selection procedure should be improved or perhaps changed altogether. And a simple way of testing this is to compare the log files with the lemma list for the dictionary, or rather the full form lexicon uh, of the lemmas in the dictionary that, are, that our lemma selection procedure should be improved. Maybe. Um, I should also say that um, we are not statisticians, so we haven't made an awful lot of uh, sophisticated significance analysis and, and stuff like that. It, what you see are um, fairly simple SQL queries from the databases. Um, 
we have made extracts and we've browsed through them. So the, it's more the, the raw figures that you can read in tables and illustrate in, in graphs. And as such, it is not rocket science, but nevertheless, it does give some interesting results, I think. But as always with empirical analysis, there are all kinds of reservations that we should make. And I'll let me mention just a few one. First, the uh, corpus that we have chosen to investigate uh, was the original corpus underlying the, the first, the printed dictionary. Um, and we chose to, to use that corpus because it is very well balanced and the results are therefore um, quite reliable. The downsize of it is that the size of it is not so, so impressive by today's standards. And it also means that there is a time issue involved. So obviously, you shouldn't expect to find more recent neologisms, as there are no texts in the corpus younger than 92. Um, so you can find some zero occurrences which are to be ascribed to the, cho the choice of corpus. In reality, we have, of course, used more recent corpus material for the newly added material. Secondly, um, we've tried to tidy up a bit uh, in the search log as it has some sources of noise that we wanted to get rid of. As a starting point, we have only the search string entered into the search field and can only guess how a particular uh, lookup should be understood. So if a string um, can be interp interpreted as belonging to two different lemmas, that has been counted for as a match for both. Secondly, um, a search can be performed by humans or by robots, and robot crawling can be useful for a number of purposes, but not in our case. So we are only interested in finding the words that real people have searched for. Uh, searched for. So we have removed uh, all the crawler, crawler robots from, from Google, and malicious hacker attacks and our own tests uh, surging insofar as we've been able to identify them. But as we only have the search strings, then there may still be some non-genuine, uh, non-human lookups left that we haven't been able to uh, distinguish from real lookups. The same holds for meta searches um, in Google where people uh, type in dictionary or synonym or whatever, I suspect rather to find a dictionary or a synonym rather than to see the actual entry in the dictionary. If you're interested in, to see what a search like look like, this is an example with some 10 lookups from 2009, just for those of you who are curious to see. But let's get to the results themselves. First, some Overall numbers, in total, we're left with about 30 million lookups in the three-year period and some 2.2 million different, different ones. Out of the 30 millions, uh, about 25 were successful. That is, there is a direct match. So it follows that the remaining 5 million were unsuccessful. There were about 2 million different lookups that didn't match an entry. And finally, you can see that just over 20% of the lookups were not in the lemma form, uh, but were in inflected forms. If we then turn to look at corpus frequency as the guiding principle, you can often hear statements like these, but now we're in a position to check if it's a myth or a truth. And as we shall see in a moment, the negative statements about corpus frequency are not entirely corroborated in our findings. Altogether, there are only 202 words that have never been looked up. There are about 5,000 words that have been looked up at most three times, and there are 16,000 16, words that have been looked up less than 10 times. And altogether, 
uh, we have about 100,000 lemmas. A little less if you count the database due to the presentation of the data. If you continue in this way, you can say, you can see the distribution of lookup in this way um, so that um, we have a cumulative number of words with a certain uh, maximum lookup frequency. Um, and you can see there is quite a large number of words with a fairly low um, lookup frequency, depending on what you consider to be a low frequency. As I said, if it's zero, there are only 202. But if you think that the threshold should, should be set to 100 lookups, then it's almost six, 60,000 words, or 60% 60 that fall into the category of rare consultation. So that's why we read it probably no, but so it depends on what you consider to be a low frequency. If we go back here um, to the next statement, no one looks up the most common words. The other, this statement is in fact quite easy to refuse. There are many common words on the list of the most looked up words. For instance, function words. There are 64 function words among the top 500 most looked up words. And among the 1,000 most looked up words, uh, more than a quarter is also among the 1,000 most frequent lemmas in the corpus. Almost 60% of them belong to the 10,000 most frequent words. So that is quite a significant number, I think, although I, we, we didn't run any uh, significance test, as I said. Now, let's turn to uh, another interesting connection, is to investigate the number of corpus forms and executed lookups. This is what we see in this graph, where we can get a picture of how valuable it is to use the corpus as a guide to lemma selection. What we have here is the number of word forms along the x-axis and the percentage of uh, dictionary lookups covered on the y-axis, the um, one to the left. Uh, the number inserted in the boxes are absolute frequencies, so that uh, it takes, for instance, roughly 13,000 word forms to return 30% of all lookups successfully. And the word form which is ranked this 13,000th, um, has an absolute frequency of 177. So that is the, the second box that you see on the left. And so on. Ideally, we would, of course, like to be able to return 100% of all lookups, but that's not possible for two reasons. One is that it takes more corpus forms than we have in the corpus. And secondly, um, the noise in the search string that we find. There are lots of nonsense words and misspellings. They're so plentiful that we will probably never be able to, to reach 100%. To cater for that, we calculated the same connection but used only search strings uh, that were successful. That is that we got rid of the noise from all the no match ma matches. This is what you see here. It is basically the same overall picture that you get, but notice that the numbers on the x-axis is now considerably lower. Notice also that now it is possible to reach 100%, which should be uh, no wonder since we've only considered successful lookups. Um, but it's also possible with the number of word forms that are in the corpus, you can see now 100% is reached around the 600,000 word forms that are actually in the corpus. But perhaps most important, it is to pay attention to the shape of the curve. We can see that it takes an awful lot of words to get from 80 to 100%. 
and we see that the absolute frequency after 100,000 uh, is very low. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the value of using corpus frequency uh, as a guideline for lemma selection uh, decreases dr dramatically when the curve starts to flatten out. After that, we can see that the next lemma will have a frequency of zero, one, two, or at the most three occurrences. And another way of putting it is that it means that one word could be as good a candidate for inclusion as the other. And this is probably the most important finding um, in our investigation so far, where, when we have looked only at um, uh, corpus frequency as the criterion for lemma selection. But I think time has now come to uh, consider the other option and use the search log to see what people actually look up. And this is where Henrik takes over. Thank you, Lars. I'll see uh, what I can get to, to say in the last uh, uh, precious minutes of our time. Um, I would like to talk about the user search behavior, in particular, in particular the no-match searches, searches that apparently don't match anything in the dictionary, at least anything in the dictionary's full form list, which Lars mentioned uh, at the beginning. Uh, in fact, searches for multi-word units often give a result, and searches with wildcards also give a result, of course not in the form of one single dictionary entry, but rather a list of entries. Other searches that may be considered partly successful are if the user is asked if he or she meant something slightly different, or if there's a reference to the other dictionary on our, on our site, a historical one covering older Danish. Another group is truly unsuccessful if the input is a nonsense string uh, or a misspelling which is not caught by the uh, did you mean function that we offer. And finally, a fourth group may be interesting, namely the true lemma candidates, some of which may be proper names. If we take a look at 100 random no matches, the result may seem a bit discouraging. Three out of four yield no result at all, whereas 22% give a partial result and only three out of 100 are really successful. But on the other hand, if we look at the 100 most frequent no-match searches, the picture seems a bit more optimistic. About one-fourth is successful after all, another fourth is partly successful, and the rest, half of the most frequent no-matches, yield no results. Let's then consider the unsuccessful searches. Some are proper names like the ones that you see on the screen. It's in Danish, I'm sorry. Well, you'll recognize Denmark, and uh, Jürgen is a uh, male name, and TDC is the name of our company. So they represent different categories of proper names. That seems interesting. Seem interesting. I should in, uh, add that proper names are not included in our dictionary as a principle, unless they are part of an idiomatic phrase like start with Adam and Eve, meaning going back to the very beginning. Wildcard searches there are only a few among top 100. They may be counted among the successful searches, in fact, since the user can't expect to get only one entry, but rather a list of entries. The reason uh, that we get wildcard searches like the ones that you see here may be the ongoing craze of Scrabble, like games like Word Feud and so on. A large proportion uh, are nonsense lookups like the ones you see on the screen. We believe that due to automatic lookups, maybe hacker attacks, uh, CUXA is also this uh, word feud thing. You want to get rid of the annoying letters. Config, it may be a genuine word, we don't know. Or an uh, automatic search. A few no matches are more or less true candidates for inclusion in the dictionary. For instance, the percent symbol. It is, in fact, already in the entry for the word percent and might also stem from automatic searches if uh, someone believes it's a wild card. LOL, laughing out loud, is a good example of a neologism, but on the whole we think it's 
quite reassuring, reassuring for us because so few of the no matches can be seen as good candidates for new entries. If we take a look at the random selected, randomly selected no matches, we get partly the same picture, partly something else. Still, there's a number of proper names, which might encourage us to change our policy in this respect and include proper names. We still get uh, wildcard searches. More complex ones also may suggest not only word feud, but also crossword puzzles and things like that. Still, we got nonsense lookups, pointing to hacker attacks probably. And then we get a larger group of real dictionary words, so to speak. If you know a little, about, a little bit about Danish and similar languages, you'll probably see that most of these words are compounds consisting of words that are already in the dictionary, such as PC and bank. Some of them may be neologisms, uh, more recent than the corpus, because the corpus is from the 80s and uh, 90s. And, uh, other long loan words like the ones you see may recognize differentiators uh, vigilant. Generally, these words are not in the corpus, only a few, and then only one or two occurrences at the most. And then we have a large group of other stuff, many misspellings that are not caught by our algorithm or non-standard forms, but the good news is that they only occur, they only occur a few times or only once. And then we have other input strings that are difficult to interpret, but then again, they are not frequent. So, if we have a few more minutes, uh, let's see how we can use the no match searches as an input. Um, we discovered that the no match lists included, contained quite a number of inflected forms that we didn't include already. So they were added and consequently they disappeared from these, list, these uh, no match lists. They were mainly participle forms and genitive forms. A number of non-standard forms and common misspellings were already in the dictionary and more were added. The did you mean algorithm cater for all other misspellings and typos. So these are measures mainly belonging to search functionality, but within the 1000 most frequent no match searches, we find a number of relevant um, lemma candidates. For instance, neologisms like swag and hipster, that may be recognized by everyone. Uh, they both have a frequency in the corpus of zero because they're too new, but they are searched for more than 500 times. So people want to know, f to know things about, it, about them. Another important category is loan words like the ones you see and probably recognize since they are international. We have the same pattern. They are not in the corpus. Is it because the corpus is not big enough? Is, it, is, is, is there too little academic or technical language in it, maybe? And they are also queried more than 500 times, so users apparently want to know what they mean. Another source for lemma candidates are the user's input. Annette has showed uh, the send, send a word form that we have on the page. The su suggestions end up in a database that we share with the Danish Language Council. It's probably no surprise that there's a certain overlap with the no matches, and some of these words uh, have also been added to the dictionary already. You may recognize them. Spillerliste means uh, playlists, like in iTunes and things like that. And some of them have also been reported by several users, to Skype, for instance. We think it's a good idea to in combine these resources, for instance, by saying if a word occurs on the upper part of the no match list, has been reported by users, and occurs with a certain frequency in a contemporary corpus, it may be considered a good candidate for the next entry to be written. And so I'm on my last slide. To conclude, we've been talking about the way lemmas may be selected for a dictionary. We find that a corpus is good, it is, it is even indispensable for establishing the first 60 to 80,000 lemmas. But once you have them, which is our situation, since we're not compiling the dictionary from scratch, it's a good idea to look at our search log, log and the no match list, lists, combine them with the input from our users in a sort of machine-aided introspection, which then leads us to the comforting conclusion 
that lexico lexicographers and their skills are still needed. Thank you very much. So, I don't want to keep you from coffee for too long, but still, uh, are there any, any questions? We have a room for one or two questions. Hello. Um, I'm not sh clear about the relationship between your dictionary and the corpus. Uh, do you mean that in your dictionary you have all the words in the corpus? Or are there some words in the corpus that are not in your dictionary? Or was the dictionary something that was built before the corpus? Um, I'm not sure how the history, history of it. There are words in the, in the corpus that, is not, that are not in the dictionary, but this corpus was the corpus on which our dictionary was built originally. So it's the, um, and, and then in the, the printed dictionary had some uh, 60,000 main lemmas and compounds and, and derivation given as uh, uh, examples for another 30,000 or so. Um, so that they would all be attested in the corpus uh, based on, on frequency. Okay, so there's nothing in your dictionary which is not in the corpus? Very few. We have also combined uh, what is in other dictionaries, and there are a f very few words with a zero occurrence in the corpus that we've included after all, but there are very few. Um, if I did understand right, uh, in your uh, dictionary you have inflected forms. But what I was wondering is, did you notice so many searches on inflected forms? And then again, on the, on the, in the, the table uh, which you showed, uh, you compared word forms in corpus with lookups. And I wonder what kind of information we would gather if we used lemma, lemmas instead of word forms. Because, for example, I have similar data in Italian, and we noticed that we don't have so many inflected forms in searches. So, um, well, the data is a little bit different because you don't, you, you actually, uh, people tend, still tend to <laughs> query the, the citation form and not the inflected forms. Well, in, in the beginning when we started looking at no match uh, lists uh, from 2010 and onwards, we discovered that there was a quite a number of inflectional forms, which was a bit surprising beca because, as you say, uh, we have a feeling that people still use the base form, uh, ed edu educated dictionary users, right? Uh, but uh, we, we, we were wondering maybe they, they just uh, copy-paste it into the search field because we, ha we have uh, an open search function on the website which allows people to go directly from another web page directly to the dictionary. So that's how uh, s some of it can be explained. Okay, thank you again. <laughs>